Hi everyone. Um, you already know what this video is going to be about. Just warning you, um, I'm an ugly crier, so. Today's Wednesday, February 2nd, and um, Monday night, um, before I give you the details, but Monday night we found out that Boston has cancer. The reason why I'm doing a separate video is because I posted on Instagram yesterday and I wasn't expecting the overwhelming messages of love and support from a lot of you and I thank you and Savannah does too you guys know we adopted Boston maybe like three years ago and of course he's part of the family and we love him we've always had a dog since I um, bought my house I bought my house in 2011 when we moved in and less than six months we had a dog so I know you guys didn't ask but I'm gonna give you a little rundown and I'm just stalling because I know you guys are wondering more details anyway I messaged some of you guys back on Instagram instead of going through each individual message and letting you guys know what happened because a lot of you guys are asking in detail about six months after I moved into this house um, I, I had never been able to have a dog um, living in the apartments that we were in or any apartment so that was never an option before but when we moved here I don't know if it just dawned on me like hey I, we can get a dog you know this is our home we can do whatever we want basically so you know how Petco or PetSmart used to have those dog adoptions where all of the dogs are outside and you know you pick which one you want and you take them home that day something like that so I remember it was just me and the girls Tyreek was spending a night at my cousin's house the dog her name was Emma and she was a she was a huge dog she was a puppy but she was huge um, she was housebroken they said and what was she she was a lab and a pit bull mix she was so pretty she was like gray and white and she had these like grayish bluish eyes she was so pretty um she was a little intimidating but the way she was it was like i was a little bit apprehensive but i wasn't brought her home and of course she was a little nervous going, going around the house which is normal for dogs you're taking them out of whatever setting they were in and so when Tyreek came home the next day she was fine with us girls right so when Tyreek came home the next day he went to her and she like ducked around the coffee table at the time and she just bared her teeth and started growling and she would not go nowhere near him and he was trying to do everything he could to make her come to him and at the time we didn't know anything about dogs you know we didn't know that you know you let them go to you on their time or whatever like that so we were trying to force her to get used to Tyreek we didn't know anything so nothing was working so after a few days I finally called where I adopted her from and then they told us they said oh yeah she's not good around men isn't that something you should have told us I mean just because you didn't see any men or any males with us when we adopted him or her you know you don't know who lives in our home so they were nice and generous enough to take her back because nothing was working this dog would not go around Tyreek and the way she was growling at him and barking I was afraid that you know she was attack him or something like that so um, we sent her back we only had her for like less than a week so then not too long after that I should have actually researched and found out what dog would work for us but we were just like on the fly and like oh we're getting a dog you know so then after that we adopted two chihuahuas and male and a female um, Ricky and Lucy is what we named them and they were eight weeks old they were not potty trained but we read books on how to potty train dogs so we thought we were ex experts 
we're okay dogs we were trying to get used to them and trying to get them used to us but they had separation anxiety from the mother and if I can find it I put it on Facebook years ago because they had separation anxiety so bad one of them would yell and yip and like cry almost all night and it was so annoying and I recorded it one night and I'll let you guys hear it So that would go on for like two hours because if we were in the room with the dogs, they would be okay. But if you were out of the room or out of their sight or whatever like that, that went on like that for a long time. We just could not get these dogs on a schedule. This was when my kids were in school and we weren't here most of the day for them and we actually gave them back to who we adopted them from and yeah and I know a lot of you guys are gonna say you know when you get dogs it's a forever commitment and I get that I do get that but at the same time we weren't giving them to kill shelters or anything like that we were giving them to people who knew better than we did so after that I went to the dog spot online and they had this schnauzer on there his name was Leo and I'm reading everything about him and seeing how the size he was and I'm like this would be a good dog for us and the kids he's a little bit older and he's already housebroken and stuff like that so you know let's take take a chance on him so we actually filled out the application or yeah the application and they whatever paperwork they do to see if you qualify see if it would be a good fit for Leo and so we were and we drove out to Lodi and on this big old like ranch style house and drove up and he ran right to us it's like he knew <laughs> and so we've had Leo ever since and we had Leo a, a long time Leo was a good dog he was housebroken I think he only had a couple of accidents in the house in the beginning and that's because they told us the, you know we're taking him out of the environment that he was used to being in and even though it was a shelter he was he had still gotten used to being there so they said he was an owner surrender because he kept getting out of their backyard and for like a month I was afraid that he was gonna jump the fence and you know get lost but he never did so who knows the reason why they got rid of him I don't know Leo was the perfect dog and I feel guilty saying that because <laughs> you know Boston it's just different personalities uh, Leo was perfect he listened to everything and when you would say get out the kitchen because I'd never allowed any of my dogs in the kitchen that's just me I don't think they belong in the kitchen just because I just don't that's just me but he would back his paws up like right to the line where oh, here's the kitchen and whatever he would do that so <laughs> that was cute uh, yeah we had Leo for a long time a long time Leo's been to my mom's house like Austin has been to my mom's house and Leo was just a cool dude and then Leo we I don't I don't know what happened with Leo Leo it just happened overnight and my son went out to the backyard to look for him and found him laying um, kind of like behind the shed that was hard and then after that we got Cody and the time between Leo dying and then when we got Cody it was a long time because we were all heartbroken and I'm like I'm never getting another dog and I don't know I guess we all had to heal so we've always had dogs in the house but the time between Leo and Cody was the biggest block of time that we didn't have a dog in the house so then we got Cody for my aunt you guys know that story I took you guys on um, that adventure and we I know a lot of people were mad and upset that I gave Cody back to my aunt but Cody he was a beautiful dog you no know, I got him from my aunt um, in Southern California he was a lab husky and German Shepherd mix 
So he was going to be a pretty big dog. And so once again, I'm thinking, okay, um, the dog is going to be around me. I'm not going to be afraid because I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but I have a fear of dogs. I'm actually terrified of dogs. When I was younger, my mom said some dog attacked me, but it was a little dog. So I don't know ever since then. I don't even remember when that happened. I don't remember. I don't remember that incident, but I know I grew up having a fear of dogs. So I do have a fear of dogs. So that's why when I look for dogs, I look for something that can grow in the house with me and I can get used to it. Or a dog that, I don't know, you just feel comfortable around and just, just know, kind of just know. Got Cody and we knew he was a puppy and you no know, puppy's gonna do things that puppy dogs do. He chewed on things and we did get him chew toys. Uh, my aunt did an awesome job at potty training him. So he was housebroken and I think he only had one accident in the house. That's when we first got him because he just didn't know where to go. So until we showed him, you know, that was the only time he had an accident in the house, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, he would only listen to Tyreek and um, it just got to be a little bit much and I'm still not giving all the details whatever but he was kind of like a monster dog he chewed up the wires to my air conditioner and my heater and it wouldn't turn on and screen door on my sliding door he tore that the screen door off he tore the screen off my windows in my kitchen so that's the reason why if you guys remember during a shutdown I replaced the screens on my windows there and I also put a new screen up screen door I know I'm rambling but I'm just avoiding the actual subject so um anyway to make a long story short on that one asked my aunt if she would take him back and of course they said yes and he went over there causing trouble he actually attacked his canine siblings in the dog's private area he like ripped at it and tore it and he had to go get surgery and I felt so bad for my aunt just let me know and yeah so then they because I don't know maybe he wasn't used to being around other dogs anymore maybe that's the reason why he did that I don't know but they took him to a no-kill shelter so and then got to the point to where we're like okay we're ready for another dog and so then we got Boston and if you guys remember when we went to go say hi to him and whatever and put down a deposit Savannah went with me and he immediately immediately attached to Savannah and I was actually getting the dog for me and I'm like this is my dog um technically we all know in this house that that's Savannah's dog because she's his person and now we know how our lifestyle and our knowledge and whatever we're better with older dogs ones that already come housebroken and ones that are already a little bit older and I don't mind if a dog is hyper you know that doesn't bug me at all but the like chewing on everything that part's gone and the disobedience or whatever so you know we're better with older dogs So we were told that Cocker Spaniels, um, which is what Boston is, that they have a lot of health problems. We were told that when we got him and we were told that, you know, they can lose their hearing, which Boston is losing his hearing. And we always make a joke about it because we say, oh, you don't come, we call you, but you hear food bags and you come running but he is losing his hearing so that you know is something that we found to be true as far as you know his breed and um we we're also told that they have joint problems and you know different things like that so he does take vitamins and stuff like that you know for his bones and stuff 
like that, just, you know, just to keep him healthy. And when we got him, he has, a, he had it like a fatty patch underneath on his chest area. And they did have us feel that and they told us that they had it checked out and it's benign. It's just like a fat pocket, but you know, it feels like it's something, but it's not. And even when we took him to the vet, you know, and they did exams and they said, yeah, that's exactly what it is. He had never had any problems. Um, he came here and um, it's funny because every time we get a new dog, they don't want to go down the hallway. They don't want to leave the living room. When we got Boston, Savannah and I, we had a sleepover in the living room. So we stayed in the living room with them. And then I think that next day, later on that day, he started getting more familiar with the surroundings and he would go down the living room, I mean, go down um, the hallway and of course now he's all over the house, except the kitchen. He's not allowed in the kitchen. You guys, honestly, 15 years ago, if you would have told me that I would be crying over an animal, over a dog, I would have laughed at you. I cried when Leo died, I did. But there was such a disconnect there with me and animals. And now to see me like this, I just, I was a different person then. And it's not like I wasn't mean to them or anything. I wasn't mean to them or anything like that. Um, I just didn't understand until Leo passed away, you know, that you could actually truly love a dog. Other than his hearing, Boston has been fine. So we thought Monday afternoon, he started acting really weird, not his normal self. Usually when we let him out to go to the go potty and we bring him back in he'll run around the house because he's looking for savannah because i remember i told you guys he has like a just an attachment to her and it's like if she's not in the room where is he where is she and he goes looking for her so usually if i let him back in he'll run around the house like where is she he'll go to the last place he's seen her so when he came in he didn't do that he went right to his bed and laid down and at that moment, I'm not thinking anything of it. And then later on, Savannah's like, he's being really different. He's not moving around. He was in the same spot for a long time. And I was working on Monday from home. So I'm paying attention, but I'm not paying attention. He would drink water, but he wouldn't eat anything. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll just call the vet, thinking I'll call the vet the next day and schedule him to be seen to get him checked just to make sure everything's okay. He continued just laying around and when Savannah got up, you know, he would lift his head up, but he wouldn't get up to go follow her. I'm When I tell you guys he follows her everywhere, I am not joking. She gets up and she moves like this. He stands up and he does the same thing because he's like, where are we going? So he's like attached to her. I think he gets like separation anxiety when she's not around. Cause when she walks out the door, you know, he'll stand by the door and he'll just look. I've showed you guys, you know, before. So Monday and time goes on and, and I'm thinking Boston is in her room with her. So I just go down the hallway and he's in his crate. The door's open and he's laying there and I've always done this, even when my kids were babies and every dog we have, you know, just to make sure they're breathing, just, you know, see their stomach rise and fall. So that's just me. So he was breathing. And so I patted him on the head and he didn't move. And normally when you touch him, even if he's asleep, you touch him or anything like that, he pops his head up or he'll open his eyes to acknowledge you or at least, you know, like what's going on. So it, nothing. And so then 
I picked up his paw and let it go and it just dropped and he was still breathing and I shook him and he wouldn't move he was still breathing and I'm thinking well maybe he's on his way out so I think I just screamed his name and he finally opened his eyes then his eyes looked like it, I don't know just looked really weird like it was glassed over or something had like a haze or a fog to it <laughs> so Savannah comes running out of room and I told her what happened so we found a vet that was open that wasn't trying to gouge us and take every cent we had you know so we took him in and they took him in right away um, they came out to the car to get him we stayed in the car and waited and I was gonna vlog a little bit then but I don't know in my mind I thought maybe he had just eaten something from the backyard or something and it's something in his stomach that they could take out or something like that But then yet, deep down I knew that, or I felt that it was something more. So the doctor called me and I put the phone on speaker so Savannah could hear it as well. And she said, um, they did they did the exam, x-rays and all that, right? So he has a huge mass of tumor that's attached to his spleen. And it's bleeding. And yes, they can remove it, but that would only give him three to six months, and half of that would be spent him trying to recover. And if, of course, if they had caught it sooner, you know, they could have did something about it. But it's not like he can talk. And she said, the reason why, you know, he started to feel bad that night is probably because it ruptured and it started to bleed and that's what made him sick. So the prognosis is not good. They quoted us 7000 for the surgery. And she was saying herself the bet that if money wasn't an option and they did the surgery, it would all be done in vain because this is fatal at this stage. And then they asked us if we wanted to put him down Monday night. And we're like, no, we're not expecting this emotionally. We didn't expect to hear all this. So she said he probably is in pain. But she did feel comfortable enough. She didn't push the hole in the blight thing for Monday. But she said she is comfortable with us taking him home and her sending him on. He has pain meds. And he also has some kind of vitamin too, um, because his blood count is low. Who knows how long he's been losing blood. So this right here, that's his little pill for his the pain. And then she gave us some, she said some Chinese herbs that should help. It is blood count and just came in this little pack. And it's a capsule as well. So that and he takes these so well we just put them in bread like wrap it up <laughs> and he, he'll take it so <clears throat> one thing about Boston he'll eat so when he wasn't eating we knew something was wrong <sighs> so 
So anyway, she said she felt comfortable with us taking him home on the pain meds and watching him um, to decide what route we want to take. But she did also say that of course to watch him and if he gets worse and he's just not himself or if he passes out for us to give her a call so they can euthanize him. And as much as we don't want that, of course we want the surgery to try to give him a longer life. At the same time, don't want him to be in pain. Don't want him to suffer just because we want him here. It's like times like these, you wish they could talk to let us know what they need and what's wrong. He is eating a little bit more. Um, he's sleeping a lot. We think maybe the pain meds, maybe it makes him drowsy or whatever. So we've been just letting him out to go use the bathroom. And sometimes like before, we would just let him be outside a little bit, you know, just be a dog, run around, whatever. But now we're bringing him right back in because we don't want anything happening and us having to go look for him or he's laying on the side of the house somewhere. And poor Savannah, she's besides herself. Um, that's her buddy. We're still going to try to do whatever we can to make him comfortable without him being in any pain. I've come to the realization that um, I know what's going to happen eventually whether it's a few days, a few weeks, a few months, um, I'm preparing myself for that. Yeah. <sighs> Y'all, seriously, if you would have told me 15 years ago that I would be crying and heartbroken over any animal, I would have said you're lying, you're mistaken, you got the wrong girl. And yet here I am. So yeah, um, that's the update on Boston. He is here in the room with Savannah. Um, since Monday night, he's been laying. She's been laying on the floor with him just to be closer to him. So yeah, you guys. Um, Keep us in your thoughts. Especially Savannah. Especially Savannah. She's having a hard time with this. <sighs>